Warriors Corner. People, partners, and innovation winning in the CENTCOM AOR with presenter Lieutenant General Patrick D. Frank, our CENT CG. Oh, well, thanks, team, for the uh, introduction. Uh, I am going to call out one of my best friends in the Army sitting right up here, uh, Major General Joel Tyler. So he's already beating me up. Uh, saying that I got a Garth Brooks uh, set up on here, uh, looking like uh, the New York City concert out there with this microphone. Uh, but even though he's harassing me from the front row, uh, we'll still drive on with this. As I see uh, many people here in the audience, uh, everybody is familiar with the CENTCOM region and what our CENT has really been doing over the past 20 years. You really know Afghanistan and Iraq and what uh, our soldiers have been doing in those fights. We're going to provide for you today the posture across the RCEMP footprint and hopefully a couple of new things that you were not tracking. People's partner and innovation. That's really the strategic theme that is coming from General Carrilla. So as he's done his assessment as the CENTCOM commander, he's provided that to all the component commanders as well as to OSD and the service chiefs. Uh, really focusing in on the people aspect today the Army being the service that is driven by our people, and we'll talk about that today. Winning in the CENTCOM AOR, Chief of Staff of the Army, General McConville, always tells us, as he did this morning, as he did at the Army 10 miler the other day, winning matters. Every RCENT soldier, whether forward deployed or back to the headquarters at Shaw, attacks each and every day from a winning matters perspective, and you see that across the entire CENTCOM AOR. Something you may not be familiar with is the patch on the bottom of that screen. So that's the third army patch. That's the patch that Patton wore in World War II. But the text around it right now is the campaign that is provided by Sergeant Major Garza. He's sitting right behind me. He's our command Sergeant Major. Sergeant Major came up with that theme that says, strong sergeants make strong soldiers. Strong sergeants make strong soldiers. All of our partners, as we engage with them across the CENTCOM AOR, understand that as a U.S. Army strength. So what Sergeant Major is doing on a daily basis is highlighting our non-commissioned officer corps and the professionalism in that corps. I'll introduce uh, not only Sergeant Major Garza behind me, uh, our fourth BCD commander, Tom Caldwell, is behind me, ODRP, Mike Trotter, uh, Colonel Zach Miller, uh, third SFAB commander, and then Colonel Eric Flesh is behind me to RXO. So I recruited these guys from the audience. I should have grabbed Kim Fields and put her up here too, uh, helping us out uh, when it comes to everything U.S. Army Corps of Engineers in theater. Next slide, please. Many of you have been familiar with the mission of RCENT and CENTCOM, again, over the last 20 years, what we've been doing in theater, especially in Afghanistan and Iraq. But as you take a look at what General Carrilla is looking at as far as posture of the force, we are shifting our focus to our strategic advantage, which is our partnerships. It's our soldiers, it's our units, it's our commanders engaging out there in partnerships while maintaining a sufficient and sustainable force uh, throughout that CENTCOM and that RCENT footprint. We provide the C2, we provide rapid force protection, and most importantly, we provide a sustainment footprint. We recently had General Carrilla out at the port of Yambu, that's on the Red Sea out in western Saudi Arabia. He looked back to the east and he said, I can see the sustainment footprint that RCENT provides to him as the combatant commander for all of his operations, whether that is a tip fit, feeding the no plan, whether that is a exercise that we're conducting with partners in theater. That sustainment footprint that comes from our center is critical, and that is something we provide on a daily basis. For the secretary and the chief, we have responsibility for over 11,000 deployed soldiers in theater, and then uh, across that region, 550 million people that our soldiers are engaging with out there, 18 different languages spoken across that region. That's a force that is a total army force. It's not just active duty force. 31% active duty, 45% guard, and 24% reserve forces out there. Some of our major commanders in OIR, Major General Matt McFarlane, 
our task force Spartan commanders, 35th ID is Major General Will Blaylock out of Kansas and Missouri leading that formation. And then first TSC, Major General Michael Russell out of Fort Knox with the forward headquarters forward deployed. Next, please. One of those strategic choke points you always hear about in the CENTCOM region uh, here, the Suez Canal, and that's the ever given. Everyone remembers when that ship went sideways on us and we were scrambling down at CENTCOM uh, to provide partners with assistance on something like this. When we talk about strategic choke points and the economic impact they have across this region, we often think uh, contact with a threat out there. We don't really think about the ever given going sideways on us. So we're calling up Kim and the Corps of Engineers for assistance on stuff like this. The same thing is going on on a daily uh, basis in the Strait of Hormuz, the Baba Mandel, the other two strategic choke points that are out there. 48% of the world's oil in this region, 47% of China's oil coming out of this region. So we talk about strategic competition. It is right here in the CENTCOM AOR, RCENT, and our other components see it on a daily basis. And again, 33% of the oil impacts, imports going into Europe. Next slide. Abraham Accords. So with the addition of Israel into the CENTCOM AOR, making the 21st uh, partnered nation in the CENTCOM AOR, the Abraham Accords have changed the dynamic of what we see on a daily basis with our partners. We see it first in a security and a military uh, environment, but we've also seen rapidly a change in economics as well as a change in political atmosphere based on the Abraham Accords. Again, signed two years ago, August of 2020, uh, but a dramatic impact, especially with the addition of Israel uh, as one of our partners in the CENTCOM region. Next slide, please. Strategic competition, uh, China and Russia. We all know, we heard the Secretary today talk about China as a pacing uh, threat that we have. Uh, as you look across that CENTCOM region and you see the threats that are out there with both uh, Russian influence, the Chinese influence, as well as the Iranian influence. Again, these are areas that the components are in a daily dialogue with CENTCOM down in Tampa uh, during that CENTCOM Commander's Cub uh, that occurs every day. Next, please. As we dive into the impact of China across all 21 nations in the CENTCOM region, they have an economic impact. The upper left-hand corner, that's the Belt and Road Initiative. All of you are familiar with that. and the economic impacts, uh, the interaction that it is having uh, with our partners across the region is dramatic. Uh, Yahweh and the 5G network that we see uh, in many of our partner nations and that exchange that is going on with the Chinese. Uh, you see the port there in Djibouti uh, and the Chinese having influence throughout uh, the area in the Red Sea. We uh, are component partner NAVSET, uh, all often reporting on Chinese influence there, as well as naval exercises with both Iran and Russia, as well as being the largest investor in the Suez Canal development project. Uh, that influence is something that we see on a daily basis, as well as our SDO DATS reporting that from embassies across the region as they report into CENTCOM. Next, please. Russian influence, uh, and specifically here, uh, when it comes to Arsent and CENTCOM, we're talking about the Russian influence in Syria. Also Russian influence in the, in the CASA region, uh, but on this slide, we'll talk about the Port of Tartus and their impact in Syria on current operations. Russian forces uh, mainly located in the northwestern portion of the country. Uh, we see those forces, whether we're conducting patrols with soldiers from 110 Mountain out of OIR, or whether AFSENT and General Grinkovich and his uh, uh, forces are encountering the Russians as they fly uh, missions across Syria. But it is something that we encounter on a daily basis. Again, great power competition ongoing uh, throughout the area uh, of influence here as well as the recent purchase of UAVs by the Russians uh, from the Iranians. Next, please. Iran and the influence of Iran across the region. Uh, whether it is uh, the Iranian ballistic missile force or 
whether it is the proxy groups that the Iranians uh, provide support to, and you see multiple uh, groups on this map, Hezbollah, Hamas, and the IMGs that we know are constantly uh, providing a threat to our forces in Iraq and in Syria. Next, please. Deterring Iran, and as the CENTCOM commander is focused in uh, Tampa, as well as the component commanders on the threat that Iran poses uh, to our partners. The greatest way uh, that we can assist the region is to ensure that the threat is understood by our partners and that we are working on a daily basis with them on this threat. Whether that is uh, integrated air and missile defense or that is working with their land forces, each of the components has a piece of assisting our partner forces throughout the region in the threat that Iran poses through its proxy forces and ballistic missile forces. Next, please. Our violent extremist organizations throughout the region. Uh, of course, everyone is familiar with ISIS and AQ, but the vast majority of the violent extremist organizations, tier one organizations, are found within the CENTCOM region. So we continue to work with our partners on this. Uh, it is a uh, topic that comes up on a daily basis across the components uh, and uh, with other uh, partnered special operations uh, elements. Next, please. Counter VEOs. Again, the success here as success is with countering Iran Iranian influence is working through our partners. Uh, our partner Intel Network uh, providing the critical human on VEOs and uh, what the VEOs may potentially influence the region in as far as attacks uh, critical to the CENTCOM mission in being able to address these threats and continue to work uh, with our partners across the region. Next, please. Innovation. Uh, innovation across the CENTCOM region is something General Carrilla has taken with him when he was the 18th Airborne Commander and now has brought that to Tampa. Uh, in fact, I uh, recently got a uh, email from uh, Sergeant Mickey Reeves. He's in Task Force Americal, uh, Bravo Company, 1st Battalion of the 82nd Infantry, Massachusetts Army National Guard. He said, quote, sir, it's an honor uh, that I have, and in full confidence, I am certain that my innovation will aid the CENTCOM mission, and I will be winning this for our CENT. Pretty uh, neat uh, note to be getting from a sergeant out there who provided his innovative idea to the CENTCOM commander. This is a sergeant uh, from the Massachusetts Army National Guard that is competing in the CENTCOM Innovation Oasis. Think Shark Tank. Uh, so General Carrillo asked for uh, innovative ideas from across the entire footprint of CENTCOM. All the components providing them. Whether you're a soldier, sailor, airman, marine, guardian, you're a DA civilian, you could provide your input to CENTCOM. Uh, they're down to five, and Sergeant Mickey Reeves is one of those uh, five that'll be going in front of the CENTCOM team and providing that in a Shark Tank-like uh, environment uh, with his innovative ideas. So we're rooting for the home team uh, that uh, Sergeant Reeves comes through on that innovation oasis and provides that out to fellow soldiers in the formation. You see on here Task Force 39. That is the task force that we have recently stood up at RCENT that is going to drive innovation for our formation. Each of the components has also stood up a innovation task force. Uh, task Force 99 for AFCENT and Task Force 59 for NAVCENT. NAVCENT is out uh, working uh, with their sail drones across the region. A great uh, uh, ability from our partners to afford that type of technology and place those out in the Arabian Gulf or into the Red Sea. What we're attempting to do is work the same type of innovation in the land domain and provide that for border security. Many of our partners have stepped forward and said, we've got large unsecure borders. How could we take innovation driven by CENTCOM and RCENT and provide that to us and helping to secure our borders? Some of the other areas on there are aspects of uh, mission command and digitizing our command posts uh, for our partners. Next, please. Increased partnership. 
again, going back to the assessment uh, developed by General Carrilla and seeing that our strategic advantage is through our partnerships. It's through our people. And whether that is uh, 3rd SFAB with Colonel Zach Miller standing behind me, Zach is getting daily requests for additional contacts uh, with partners in theater for his formation to come and provide training opportunities. Um, the demand tempo is so high uh, that he, he really can't provide enough uh, forces uh, to get after each one of the training opportunities that's out there for 3rd SFAB. Task Force Spartan, which is our division headquarters out of Kansas and Missouri, 35th Entry Division. They are partnering at the platoon level. So platoon immersion out there uh, across the, the theater. And then state partnership program. Another great way for us to partner across the region. In fact, many of our uh, regional partners are saying that is something that is working very well in a location like Jordan. And I want the same type of state partnership program to be brought to my formation. Um, so that is the aspects of strategic advantage that we're seeing across the theater. Next, please. Another aspect of that uh, would be the Middle East Air Defense Network. So as we talk about integrated air and missile defense um, and our Patriot soldiers, our 14 series soldiers that we've had on multiple deployments, um, high deployment op tempo uh, for those formations, and to be able to assist the Army from a CENTCOM or an RCENT perspective, how do we build capacity throughout the Middle East in their formations so that our Patriot forces uh, can come back to the United States, conduct training and modernization, and provide resiliency to that 14 series uh, soldier, that formation which is so critical for us. The 32nd AAMDC, uh, Brigadier General Dave Stewart, uh, provides us that subject matter expertise out there when it comes to providing assistance to our partners in theater and then also providing an Army perspective of resiliency to the 14 series soldiers that have been on back-to-back -back deployments for us. Next, please. Counter UAS. Uh, probably 20 years ago, we would have seen an IED up on this screen. The threat that we face in theater, similar to the IED that we faced when we had flat bottom Humvees in Iraq and we were taking large number of uh, casualties throughout the region. This is the current threat that we're facing. Whether it is one-way attack UAVs, whether it is a prop uh, UAV, a rotary wing, as uh, that soldier's uh, deploying, that is the type of threat that we face throughout the region, again, on a daily basis. Um, our partners see not only the technology that the United States Army brings as the service lead for the Joint Force, but also the tactics, techniques, and procedures that are being conducted in Iraq and Syria. These are on our secure locations, and our soldiers have gone to school on the enemy threat. They've developed the battle drills. They've AAR those, and they pulled the lessons learned from those. And then repetition, repetition, repetition to ensure that at a secure location, they can execute a layered defense of that location. That is really what our partners are looking to get in the Red Sands Integrated Experimentation Center. This is another initiative by CENTCOM to pull partners together and share counter UAS capabilities, understanding how we conduct a layered defense with our soldiers and provide them the same type of capabilities for their secure locations. Next, please. Third SFAB, so here's Colonel Zach Miller and his team out of Fort Hood, Texas. Uh, the demand signal for this formation, as you heard the Secretary today talk about the fourth SFAB uh, providing assistance in Europe is off the charts. Uh, Zach and his team are in high demand by our partners in theater uh, and just a tremendous uh, organization. I was a commander at JRTC uh, for two and a half years, uh, 24 rotations in the box. The only time a unit ever got inside of Geronimo, the world-class op force decision cycle, was an SFAB. The only time they ever got inside Geronimo's decision cycle was an SFAB. And that's through a second language. That's pretty impressive. Um, this organization is from top to bottom leaders that have already done that job and they're in a second go around. 
Uh, so brigade commanders, battalion commanders, company troop, battery commanders all have done that job successfully before. So you can see from top to bottom the leadership that drives this thing. It's just an absolute engine for training opportunities. Um, so Zach and his team, you see him there, a a AJ, they are across Iraq uh, providing assistance there uh, and across uh, every one of our partner nations throughout the region. Working collective training, staff training, MDMP for battalion and brigade staffs, and then collective training with uh, selected units out there and taking them and building proficiency inside of those formations. Next slide, please. This is Task Force Grizzly. This is our rapid response force. Uh, Task Force Grizzly is out of the Montana Army National Guard. Uh, currently, this is first of the 163rd CAF. Incredible formation. Um, this is the same formation that helped us uh, when we had the Hasaka prison break. Uh, and these soldiers were on scene with Bradleys in the ISA in Syria, assisting OIR uh, in that ISIS attempt to break out of the Hasaka prison. Uh, these soldiers have been across uh, Syria with their Bradleys. They've been across Kuwait conducting training with uh, partners across the region and then deployed throughout the region conducting training. Recently in Jordan uh, conducting Eager Lion with their M1s. Uh, the last rapid response force prior to 163, uh, we had deployed into H. Gaia. So this formation that the Army provides to our sent to CENTCOM is always in use. Uh, based on the demands that are coming out of theater. Next, please. Here is Eager Line. So those are uh, 163 M1 tanks out there. Um, as we talk about strategic competition, uh, Russians and the Chinese observing what the United States military is conducting in theater, what they saw in Eager Lion is six of these uh, M1s showed up by Stratair C-17. The other four came out of Kuwait on HETS, came across the Trans-Arabian Network through Saudi Arabia and entered Jordan by HET. Uh, so the capability to deploy our assets across the theater, uh, our strategic competitors are watching uh, exercises like Eager Lion and seeing how the United States Army, as well as the Joint Force, moves uh, our capabilities around the theater. Next, please. As I talk about partnerships, the CENTCOM region and the focus on Afghanistan and Iraq for the last two decades, uh, CENTCOM had not uh, taken units to our training centers, the NTC or JRTC. Our other combatant commands had done that. In fact, they do it at volume. Uh, we were just recently, two weeks ago, uh, with the deputy commander of the UAE Land Forces down at JRTC. They will go through a rotation with 2nd Brigade 10th Mountain in February of 23. It'll be a company out of their 11th Mountain Battalion. This is a high-speed unit. Uh, we've gotten great feedback uh, from the Emiratis about this organization, as well as the SFAB and uh, U.S. Embassy in theater. So we're excited to have uh, the UAE be the first in the region that comes into a U.S. Army CTC and competes at the company level. Uh, again, they'll rotate in in the February and March time frame. So there's uh, General Hamid. He's the uh, deputy for the UAE Land Forces. He's uh, meeting with Geronimo. Uh, so he has seen the enemy. He's reporting back to the 11th uh, Mountain Battalion Company Commander. He's telling him he's going to have a tough fight on his hands uh, which he, when he gets to JRTC and enters the box against Geronimo. But when it comes to building partners and talking about the training opportunities that the U.S. Army can afford, this is one of those unique opportunities that is out there that with the help of the 3rd SVAB and other uh, organizations in theater, we are able to bring based on the U.S. Army. Next slide. And that, again, shows one of our uh, M1s out at uh, the Udari Range Complex. That's uh, 163rd Cav out there conducting training. Recently met uh, with uh, Task Force Grizz. They're getting ready to rotate out here within the next 30 days to Task Force Rattler, also coming out of the Montana Army National Guard. And our discussion was their training opportunities in theater. At the Udari Range Complex, Bravo Company commander told me, He's an M1 company commander. He and his first sergeant. Sir, not only have we gone through all of our, our tables, our tank M1 tables, 
conducted gunnery, we will go back fully qualified in every one of our tanks. But we have shot the next generation of tank gunners. So they looked across their formation into each platoon and said, all right, Specialist Frank, step forward. You're going to be the next gunner. You're not crewed yet against this vehicle, but you will be the next gunner as we rotate back and our non-commissioned officers rotate through the crews. You'll be stepping forward. We're, we're going to take you through tank gunnery right now because we're in Kuwait. We're at the Udari Range Complex, and we have the opportunity to conduct more training. That is buying readiness for the United States Army and deploying that unit back to the Montana Army National Guard above full readiness. Uh, those are the things that ARSENT can assist and provide back to the Army. We appreciate the opportunity to talk to you today and just give you an executive summary about what ARSENT is doing uh, for both the U.S. Army and CENTCOM in theater. Thanks for your time today.